from the lab of security school kadana we are here to discuss uh, and explain about the internal structure of the heart um, for the specimen purposes we have taken a heart of a sheep because uh, why we have taken the heart of a sheep because it is easily available this is the first thing second thing is uh, it is very much similar to that of the heart of a human if we look uh, towards the heart of a sheep it is li uh, little bit smaller than that of the heart of a human um, it is also a little bit uh, more blunt uh, towards the apex this apex region that is the tip of the heart if we see the heart uh, we can uh, see it is external structure that is external morphology of the heart what we are going to see here is this uh, ridge first of all uh, what we notice here is the ridge of the heart this that is uh, covered with a fat this uh, cover of a fat uh, actually uh, what is below it there is a artery called as coronary artery this uh, elevation here is called as coronary sulcus this coronary artery is responsible for providing the oxygenated blood you are understanding oxygenated blood yes, what is oxygenated blood oxygen. which contains oxygen which contains oxygen, oxygen. oxygen. Yeah. So, uh, the heart itself needs uh, because uh, it never stops working it is uh, works whole of its life uh, that is pumping blood its main function is to pump blood uh, in our uh, body so it provides uh, this coronary artery provides oxygenated blood to the heart itself to the heart yes. uh, now so there is also so much of fat on the heart this fat is responsible for uh, providing the energy required a ready made and ready energy for the heart when it needs because it cannot stop any time that what we call it is death now if we see we have um, certain uh, i have used some uh, what we call it is cases of pens the scrap case of pens in order to show you the great blood vessels of the heart i have used four i have used four four and i have i have also uh, pasted some type of paper written with written names on it so first of all i will show you what is the right side of the heart and left side of the heart so i have put heart like this this is the apex of the heart this is the upper broader portion of the heart if we see it this uh, uh, lower region this part this whole part is actually the ventricular part the upper side this smaller part these are actually the auricles or what we call it is atrium we call it is atrium atrium means auricles this is auricular region these two parts and this is whole of the ventricular region again if we see this is the left side of the heart this is the left side of the heart. heart this is the right side of the heart the left side of the heart is responsible for pumping the oxygenated blood the right side of the heart this region is responsible for the pump for pumping up uh, what we call the deoxygenated blood for pumping up deoxygenated blood right. if we see again we can notice that uh, this um, type of uh, this blood vessel which is very much larger we call it as a pulmonary vein we call it as a pulmonary vein this pulmonary vein opens inside what we call that as left atrium left atrium you can notice here i have used this pen if i will push it little bit inwards it automatically open, uh, uh, what we call this opens in the upper side of the heart this part we call that is as uh, the atrium but it is on the left side we call it as left atrium okay. so this left atrium is responsible for what we call that as uh, pumping or bringing the blood which is laden with oxygen which is laden with oxygen, oxygen. it is laden with oxygen and it is responsible for bringing the oxygenated blood from lungs towards the heart towards the heart later what happens again this blood comes down this blood comes down through a what we call that as a valve through a valve what here it is the valve is located here if i will little bit give a cut here so this valve is located here if you will uh, observe there are certain types of what we call certain these sitrings these sitrings are actually the cardiac tendony we call them as cardiac yeah. these cardiac tendony these white colored that umbrella uh, umbrella sitting like structures they are very much uh, what we call that they have a lot, lot of sitrings they act just like that um, what we call that is that uh, door pressers which are in our family which are in our rooms so they are responsible for uh, closing the door that uh, door is called as bicuspid valve that door is called as bicuspid valve why it is called as bicuspid valve because it has got two cusps it has got two cusps so these sitrings these sitrings that strong sitrings are actually what we call that as uh, Uh, the sitting cardiac tendony they are responsible for closing of bicuspid valve opening and closing the sound you you hear 
the sound you yeah when uh, the first sound that sound is called as the loop sound the, it is actually uh, this sound is uh, produced when these uh, what we call as this bi bicuspid valve gets closed bicuspid valve gets closed Closer. so bicus the blood flows from the lungs Actually, imagine we have, we have lungs imagine we have here lungs that lungs have uh, a blood laden with oxygen that comes down through this pulmonary vein and that pulmonary vein pump, uh, give, uh, pumps that blood to, to directly towards this, what we call that as um, a right article, right? Articles. From that right article, the blood gets pushed down due to this contraction. Due to the contraction of the, what we call the left article, it is uh, pumped down towards the left ventricle. Left ventricle. Now it is in left ventricle, the bicuspid valve has closed. The bicuspid valve has closed. closed. It will again, uh, what we call that as get compressor, what we call here as systole. It is called as system. It will. I have already told you it in class when I teach about the structure of the heart. We are yes. in the theory. Now, when we again, when that again gets compressed, it pushes its blood through a large blood vessel. Look, that is opening here. The large blood vessel that is called as artery. That is called as artery. They have artery. The aorta also. This. Uh, now this blood comes out through this iota and ultimately it is uh, what we call the pump to whole of our body. So spreads whole of our body and gives it an oxygenated blood. And gives it an oxygenated blood. blood. Now from the organs, from the organs, the blood comes uh, back but it is without oxygen. We call that blood as oxygenated yeah. 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 blood. It comes through the what we call that as veins that are called as vena cavas. That are called as vena cavas. So, so this is actually the vena cava here. This is actually the vena cava. Yeah. So that vena cava opens here. I will give here a cut in order to show you where it opens. Here. That vena cava opens inside what we call that as right auricle. Right? Auricle. Right auricle may open ho jati hai. Yahan par, upar se, yeah? yes, so right auricle, uh, if you will observe, look at the uh, auricle is when the, the auricle left side of the heart and right yes, side of yes, the yes. heart. You will observe that this is very much thicker than that of the right yes, side. Yes. That yes, uh, very much thicker than three times more thicker than, the, the, than that of the yes, right yes, side. Yes, because it has to pump, pump blood, what we call to whole of the heart, to so whole of the organs. So it needs a what we call is bigger cavity in order to pump blood to the whole of the body. It is three times more thicker than that. Now the upper region here, what we call that is where uh, the vena cava is open, it is smaller, it is actually called, this part is actually, I am doing that in order to show you that it is actually the right article, right? Article. The right heart atrium. From that, the blood is uh, pressed again, that is it contracts and pushes blood down to this region that is called as right ventricle, right? Ventricle. It is the right side of the heart. So, but both of these, uh, uh, that, uh, right auricle and right okay. ventricle, they receive blood which is deoxygenated. It is deoxygenated. That doesn't contain the kind of oxygen because that oxygen has already been used by, used, been used by the body. Used by the body. Ultimately it goes down, but there is a volume in between them. That volume is called as tricuspid volume. Why it is called as tricuspid volume? Because it has three cusps. It has three cusps. Yeah, again, there will be that cardiac tendinary. Cardiac tendinary are actually the, what we call that as the tendinic structures which are responsible for opening and closing of what we call that as tricuspid volume. Tricuspid? Wow. Yes, yes, sir. So, it will ultimately reach this region, what we call that as right ventricle. Right? Ventricle. Right? Ventricle. Tricuspid valve will close. Tricuspid valve will close. close. Now, again, what will happen here? The blood will be pumped or pushed through an another, uh, what we call that as uh, artery, that will be called as pulmonary artery or pulmonary arc. Pulmonary arc. Uh, look, it is open. This is opening inside this right ventricle. ventricle. Right? Ventricle. So, ultimately, it will be pumped towards the lungs again. Lungs will give it oxygen. And when it will, will be laden with oxygen, it will again come through pulmonary veins. It will reach a left auricle, then it will be pumped to left ventricle. Again, it will be pumped through iota to whole parts of the body. From the body, it will, will, will be deoxygenated. The oxygen will be consumed by the cells of our body in order to do respiration. And it will come back through the vena cavas. Through the vena cavas, it will reach right, what we call that as a right auricle. Ultimately, and from that, it will reach. 
right man right man. and this will complete the circle this will complete the so these are the parts important parts that you have to remember there are other parts like we have here the muscles which are uh, connected with the cardiac tendinae these are cardiac tendinae look how strong they are cardiac tendinae these cardiac tendinae are responsible uh, they are attached to the papillary muscles they are attached to the papillary muscles papillary muscles in order to what we call that is open and close that uh, the bicuspid valve and tricuspid valve so the first sound we hear is from the closing of what we call that as bicuspid and tricuspid valve both bicuspid and tricuspid valve are closed simultaneously they are closed simultaneously but why from the second uh, sound comes that sound comes from the opening and closing of these two blood vessels that is artery that is aorta and what we call that as pulmonary valve they have got, got also got some valves that are called as semilunar valves they are called as semilunar valves so they open and close and that produce second sound you hear of your heartbeat that is dup sound this dup sound you hear two sounds that dup uh, and dup sound that makes your heart that makes your heartbeat okay so you hear Yes, sir. Have a nice day.